everybody and welcome back to the ARC Audio Technical Training Series on the PS8 and the PS8 Software User Interface. This is Episode 9 and we're going to cover how to use the parametric and third octave equalizers on the new PS8 interface. But I do need to say that this is not a video that shows you how to tune your system, but more how to use the functionality and operations of the parametric and third octave EQ, as well as how to use them simultaneously in a unique operation that we've created exclusively for the PS8. So let's get started. First, we're going to come down and open up the software. And of course, as always, we're going to open up our meters. Now we don't have any signal passing through this for the purpose of this demo, which is fine, but you can see that we are connected to a PS8. If you are looking to play around with the software, I do recommend that you do have it connected so that way you can see everything updating because there are a few functions that don't operate in offline mode uh, when, you're, when you're not connected. So. so we're going to go ahead and go over to third octave EQ. And as you see, this is your standard EQ and we have your channel names, your gain levels, which is your uh, amount of change that you have per band, per channel, and each channel has its own gain box, as well as your linking boxes. And these are how you activate these grids to the individual outputs. Now, if you try to adjust anything right now, this will not let you adjust any of these sliders because nothing's selected. But if you come over and click on output one, now you can change it. And as you see, there is a change going on in the game box that shows you what your level of amplitude is. So there's a couple different ways to operate the EQ. First of all, you can come over and you can click on the button. You can tell by the red highlight frequency which band you're on. And you can use your keyboard, which I definitely recommend for fine tuning. Or if you need to do coarse rough tuning, you can grab a hold of the slider and move it up and down as well. Or you can come up here and type in your frequency. Now, one of the really cool things about this, though, is we can come in here and we can take channel 1 and increase that. We're going to turn off channel 1 and turn on channel 2. We're going to bring down channel 2. And now we're going to click on channels 1 and 2. And it'll display channel 1 as it's still the highest value or highest position channel that is currently being selected. And now when we come in and adjust this, shows just about everything at zero except for we're at negative three here or we come to output two and boom we haven't lost any of the other adjustments on channel two and it adjusted everything relatively so we didn't lose any of the tuning where this is important is if you are tuning all of your channels individually on an RTA and then you want to globally tune for the fine tune you can do so without losing any of the original information that you had um, on, on the system so it allows you a great advantage and much easier process in tuning. Now, if you want to link all and reset, you can sit here and come over to selected flat. And as you notice here in a second, all of these will reset to zero. Now we're going to go ahead and unlink this. And one of the things we're going to show you here is, so let's say we have channel output one and output two, which is our tweeters. And let's just say we're going to go ahead and have these at the same thing, um, even though in a car, when you're individually tuning each speaker to its individual location, and yes, I know that's a horrible looking EQ, but you get the idea. Um, there's usually a different tune to the seated position or the microphone position. But let's say we're using a higher resolution uh, uh, RTA, like a 1 6th or 1 24th octave. And right now we're at 6.25, 8K, 10K, 12K. These are all your standard third octave EQ points. But let's say you have an issue at 9,900 hertz or 9.2K. You can come up here to parametric now, and this is something that's really cool. We're going to click add next. Now, if you look, we have band one. Let me explain what this is. You come back to third octave. 20 hertz is band one, band two, band three, band four, band five, band six, band seven, band eight, and so on. And every one of these bands is located within this. So if you see band one here, and it's marked as 20 hertz currently on the third octave on channel one here's all of our tuning frequencies but we're not using any of this down here we have 20 hertz right here well let's put 20 hertz to good use so we have a problem at 9.2k on channel one and channel two so we're going to come in here and we're going to type in 9200 that's 9200 or 9.2k and i want to make this a really narrow 
Q so that way I can make sure that I optimize only that frequency. So just for demonstration purposes, we're going to increase that to 20 and we're also going to increase the gain. Now if you look down on the plot in the bottom right hand side, you can see how narrow that is and we're going to increase it because of the hole that we had there. A little crazy on it, but at least this way you can see it for the purpose of this de demonstration. And just because the fact that uh, for some reason here I've got a crossover turned on, so let's go ahead and set that on all pass. You can see that better now. So now what we have here is we have band 1 for channel 1 and 2 at 9200 hertz with a gain of 11.1 .1 and a Q of 20.0. Now this is an advanced tuning feature, so if you're not comfortable with this, stay out of it and just stick with the third octave EQ. But this is where it gets really cool. Traditionally in a parametric EQ, if you're using a parametric, the problem is, is if every channel and every band is different, there's no way for you to have any kind of remaining global capability. So then if you want to make any final adjustments, you have to remember, did I do it on channel one? Did I do it on channel two? And so on. Check this out. We're going to come back to third octave. And right now we're highlighted on 20K. And we can still come in. And if you notice 5.9, 5.9, on 20 at 20k and we're adjusting them globally still well let's go ahead and remove channel one and just make sure that we're adjusting there now we're going to come in and click on channel two okay but wait a minute what's this well now if we click on 20 hertz okay if you notice this is all muted out well that's because we have the parametric eq well you didn't lose 20 hertz on all the channels Okay, can't select them on those channels because we have the band of 20 hertz highlighted. Now we can come in and select on 31.5 and 25 because those are still active. But if you notice, now we have control. Hope you're following me here. So let's go ahead now and go in and we're going to uncheck these now and come down to channel 3. If you notice, you still have 20 hertz capability. So what's going to happen now is we can come over here, let's click on 25, and say that we've tuned every channel individually and we've used up some of these unused bands for very narrow adjustments. We can come in, click on link all, and now using the arrow keys, we can still have full global adjustment of all of our unused bands. And it will adjust the slider, but if you notice though, look up in here, our gain is still set to 11.1. .1 and it's still not making any adjustments there, but we're making adjustments on all of our standard third octave EQs. So literally we've created a way to where you can actually use your third octave and your parametric EQ exactly at the same time without losing any of those adjustments and still having global capability. So another example here for parametric EQ, you can either add next, which we have band two, or you can come in to add filter and let's say we're going to type in 10 for band 10 which is 16k and you can load it that way decide you don't want the parametric eqs simply click delete come back and we're going to click channel one and two and boom whoops i'm sorry we still have channel four five and six here and we're going to go ahead and now we're going to come up to channel one and two and as you see we have channel one and two restored back to normal operation this is a really, really cool feature for the guys that are tuning real high-end systems. So, well, that's it for now. Good luck and good tuning, and we'll see you guys here in the next couple of videos. Thanks.